Hey guys and welcome back to Battlefront updates and some more Star Wars gaming news. We've had quite a good week for Star Wars gaming news for once and I wanted to recap all of that in this video as I haven't had time to cover all the stuff about Knights of the Old Republic remake as well as Star Wars Hunters which just yesterday got some new images as well so I thought I'd go over everything in regards to these two games as there's been new images, details, interviews and a bunch of stuff that I think you will find interesting if you haven't caught up to every little detail along these reveals. Also a big thank you to all of you who tuned into the charity stream this weekend. I had a blast doing that and that's also a big reason to why I wasn't able to cover these news the second they came out but I promise you I'll do better moving forward. But now let's get straight into the news. First of all we have the Knights of the Old Republic remake that I think all of you have probably heard about now but I wanted to go over all of the details that we've gotten in regards to some comments afterwards, some new details, interviews and such. First of all, Knights of the Old Republic original came out in 2003 and it plays out 4000 years before the Skywalker saga and this new remake of the game is developed by Aspire who also ported a bunch of classic Star Wars games such as the original KOTOR game, Republic Commando and more. And when they presented this project they did say stuff like they wanted to remain faithful, honor the story and things like that, which can be interpreted in many ways. Some were a little bit worried that they even said this made them think that they might not 100% follow the original story. It is a remake after all, so I'm expecting them to kind of stick to exactly how the original game or games were, with just new graphics, update everything to feel and look better, but still keep the same story. But I feel like you wouldn't have to say that you were going to honor the story or remain faithful if you're just making a remake. So I'm not sure how exactly to interpret that, but I think they know that if they change too much, people will be annoyed. Something a lot of people were curious about here, is EA involved in any way? Because I mean, EA and Bioware made the original KOTOR game. So some journalists actually reached out to EA and based off these quotes, it seems like EA are not involved in any way, which also makes sense considering Aspire is not affiliated with EA, so if Aspire is making the game, it makes sense that EA are not involved. But that's still a little bit weird considering Bioware obviously made the original, but someone else is making the remake, and Bioware doesn't seem to be involved at all. Again, the game is almost 20 years old, so most of the people who worked at Bioware back then might not work there anymore, so... The benefits of having Bioware on the project might be very minuscule and Aspire do seem like a good studio for the job. But something I also want to clarify here is release platforms because there has been a lot of confusion around this but to be clear it is going to be a PlayStation 5 timed console exclusive at launch but it will also be at PC at launch. At first I thought it was only going to be PS5 so for me you want to play on PC I'm happy it's going to be on PC at launch and PlayStation 5, but I still think that sucks overall. The fact that they say timed console exclusive obviously means that it's probably gonna be out on Xbox later down the line, but whether that's a month, a year after, impossible to say, so I can see it's a big disappointment for those of you who play on Xbox. And I'm also guessing this means that it's probably not gonna be on the PlayStation 4 at all, considering that I don't think it makes sense to have it exclusive between generations, if that makes sense. So I think it's going to be PS5 and PC at launch, and then Xbox Series S and X later down the line. We still have no release window for this game, and the teaser obviously didn't show any gameplay, but just a little badass shot of Revan. So that makes me think that the game is probably a year or two out, if not more. And I also don't think it would make a lot of sense to release an exclusive on PlayStation 5 right now, where it's like a big shortage of consoles and and not nearly everyone who wants to buy a console can even do that. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a while before we get this game, but nevertheless, fantastic news. I'm excited to get my hands on this remake because as I've said, I've actually never played KOTOR and I'm still torn if I should play the original KOTOR before this game is out or not. I probably should, but I also do know that when you play 20 year old games that you haven't played before and you don't have that nostalgic feeling, they might feel a bit clunky, but we'll see. I definitely want to give it a go. Now moving on to Star Wars Hunters, the mobile slash Switch game coming out next year. There's actually been quite a bit of leaks uh, of gameplay images from different ads for Star Wars Hunters the last week or so. 
First of all, we had like five shots that leaked from an ad, then an extra shot of gameplay, as well as just today, some new app icons showing up. But let's get back to the basics first. This game is going to be released on iOS and Android and Nintendo Switch. It's a squad-based game made by Zynga, and it's played out after the fall of the Empire. It's going to contain a bunch of new characters, which we can actually see quite a few of them on these new images here, such as Utoni, a Jawa, Skara, a Rodian, Groz, a Wookiee, J3DI or Jedi, a droid with a lightsaber, Slingshot, a Ugnaught, Reeve, which I think might be a human with tattoos or a night sister, Sentinel, a former stormtrooper or at least some of the stormtrooper outfit, Zayna, a human I think, and Imara Vex, a armored bounty hunter. And it's a little bit unclear how exactly you control the characters, but you can see in these images that you have abilities on screen and it almost looks a little bit like a shooter, but obviously it's not going to be a straight up shooter, this is mostly going to be on phones and on Switch. But all of these images show four versus four team fights, like here Gundarks versus Mudhorns, and this battle in particular actually shows a droidic guy in the background as well, uh, which I'm guessing then is going to be one of these characters you can play. As for purchases in the game, you can see on this image that you're able to buy blasters, and I would guess that the credits are normal currency that, that you get in the game, and then the purple crystals is probably the premium currency that you need to pay for. So whether or not this game is going to be pay to win or you're just going to pay for cosmetics, tricky to say but considering the game is going to be free I am 99% certain that you will be able to affect some gameplay with money. For instance in games like Pokemon Unite which recently came out to Nintendo Switch and will soon be on phones, it's free. You can play it really well without paying anything but you can boost yourself a little bit by paying. So that's probably how it's going to be here. And it seems like you're not going to be creating your own bounty hunter or character, but you have these pre-made characters that I just brought up that you will probably then be able to buy some skins and cosmetics for. At least I would be surprised if that wasn't the case. And then lastly, we do have these four store icons that popped up yesterday actually, showing Imara Vex, Sentinel, Reeve and Gross as the kind of main characters, I guess. Overall, I'm pretty excited to see how this game is gonna play out. I know a lot of you, including myself, are usually skeptical towards mobile games. And overall, I don't really play any mobile games, but I've actually gotten quite a lot into Pokemon Unite lately. Not saying that that game per se is gonna be similar to this, but it is a game that is based on the Switch and it's also going to be released on mobile within a week, I think. And it does contain a certain part of pay to win, but not where you can just buy yourself the strongest stuff and dominate everyone. So they found a pretty good balance in that game, in my opinion. And I hope they're going to be able to do the same here, where they can still make the money they're looking to make. But it's still going to be enjoyable for all of us who don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on the game. Maybe a few bucks for some cosmetics, that's it. We'll see. But nevertheless, I would love to hear your thoughts on these two games what are your expectations for the knights of the old republic remake as well as the star wars hunters game and if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button for all things star wars gaming thank you very much for watching and as always may the force be with you guys